The beginning of a typical day at work for Jim Cornette as he heads for this night's wrestling match. You feeling foggy? Hop the fence, I'll take care of it. After six years in the wrestling business, all of them as a manager, Jim Cornette has certainly made a name for himself. Trouble is, you can't say it on TV. Get out of my way! Do you know who Jim Cornette is? Yeah, he's an egg-sucking dog. He's a what? Egg-sucking dog. Jim Cornette is the lowest life form there is. You look like you just stepped off a wedding cake. What's the matter with you? Look at that cheap suit. You might say Jim Cornette is to pro wrestling what John McEnroe is to tennis, which is only appropriate since Jim's trademark is a tennis racket that he always carries. There is another side to Jim, though. Now, Jim, you're not going to beat me with that thing, are no, you? No, I'm not going to hit you, John, but I'll tell you now, I'm used to playing with McEnroe and guys like that, so, you know, your talents might not be up to my standards, but I'll... Give you a good Take Jim Cornette away from the screaming fans and the action right. in the wrestling ring, Here we go. and you find a fellow who's easygoing. That was out! 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 Try it again, John. It's okay. I got patience with you. He's cordial. John, your legs remind me of when I played Chris Everett. <laughs> and he's polite, Dude, too. Those, but, well, you got this camera. Hey, let me tell you, it's a camera, the ugliest camera I've ever seen. Here, gain some weight. Take that, okay, fella? All right. No matter where you go, though, Jim likes to talk wrestling, something he's loved ever since he was a little boy growing up in Kentucky. And as a hobby, I started doing some publicity work and, and some promotion for the promotion that was operating in Kentucky, uh, where I'm from, and, and that led to meeting some of the wrestlers. And once that I had met... Uh, some of the wrestlers and gotten to know them then I thought of the idea should I be a manager because I wanted to do something participatory but I didn't want to get my head beat in every night because that's that's <laughs> that's not going to get at all Jim came to Charlotte three years ago bringing with him a reputation that doesn't exactly endear himself to the hearts of most wrestling fans but being despised is no problem for a man who easily separates his private life from the one he leads in public my friends are my friends, my enemies are my enemies, and people that just don't like me that I don't even know, well, hey, it's not, you know, that's not my fault. Like I said, we do what we want to do, and, and a lot of people like it. A lot of people don't. You can't please everybody all the time. It's at ringside that Jim really shines, and although he is the object of a lot of boos and hisses, he is the center of attention. Oh, it's, it's ego gratification, being, a, being a, a household name in a lot of places. Of course, garbage is a household name, too. But, uh, you know, it, it's ego gratification. It's also very profitable. It's also uh, a sense of achievement. When you, when you win a match, you win a title, you win something that, that only a few other people have ever held before. Uh, it, it's a lot of different things. Bottom line with Jim Cornette, when you keep a positive attitude about things, even when you lose, you still come out a winner. If it's nothing else, pro wrestling is certainly flamboyant. If you come out there in a pair of black trunks and a pair of black boots and your hair combed over to the side, then what's going to distinguish you from any 500 other professional wrestlers? But if you find something in yourself to project, to magnify, then that's something that people can remember and people can relate to or people can take a hold of and notice. The name of the game here is self-promotion. And getting your name and face in front of the public eye is almost as important as winning. Wrestlers are all independent. They're all individuals. They're trying to promote their selves, their name, their reputation in front of the people. You have to win matches to draw crowds. You have to win matches to make money. You have to draw crowds to make money. It's all interconnected, and the bottom line is nobody's going to go see Arnold Fenster wrestle, but a lot of people are going to go see the Midnight Express and Jim Cornette wrestle because they know who we are. It is certainly physical. These men are serious about their work, and they work at it. They have to have speed, they have to have strength, they have to have stamina. They can't just train for one sport because wrestling uh, requires them to do everything. People don't realize how often that wrestlers wrestle when they're hurt. 
when they've got a cracked rib. I've known, I've known guys to wrestle with a broken hand, even a broken leg. There's no question that there's not much love lost between many opponents in the ring. And while some of that may be more for the benefit of the fans, some of it goes much deeper. You gotta realize this is a very lucrative business financially and also it's, it's, it's egos and it's tempers and it's rivalries. Almost everybody in wrestling has had at least one guy that they really could not stand and, and, and wanted to see rid of one way or another and didn't matter how. And there's a lot of guys that's not as nice as I am in professional wrestling too. <laughs> There is, though, a camaraderie among wrestlers, friends, and rivals. When popular star Magnum T.A. had his near-fatal car wreck, it shook up the entire wrestling community. It made everybody think that it can happen to anybody at any time, and, uh, and I don't have anything against Magnum. We, we wrestled. Uh, my men wrestled against him a lot, and we had a, a rivalry going, but I don't wish anything like that to happen to anybody, and, and I hope that one day he can get back in the ring. Whether you agree with it or not, pro wrestling is a part of our culture. Few other endeavors elicit such an intense emotional response. And from a ringside perspective, there's no doubt about the best part of it all. <laughs> when you win, uh, get your hand raised, make a lot of money, and get a title belt to go along with it, all in the same fell swoop. That's the best part.